just want to put a plug in for my wife and her boo-boo bomb. I get lots of boo-boos, and it really works. I'm thankful for it. Um, we want to look a little bit about if we're going to invest in knives and tools, we need to know how to care for them. And as yesterday, some of you learned, it was on a, a short notice, but as we were out there using the knives, we had to do a, a, a informal introduction to some of the safety um, requirements when using a knife. Now, my wife covered one that I'm going to repeat because it is very important, and that is the blood bubble. Always try to make sure that you keep that distance because anything can happen. And you've got to be observant of what's around you because yesterday had a lot of little ones running around. And so another thing too is if you're not using this, where should it be? In the sheath. Yes. In the sheath. Yes. Okay. Put it away. Oh yeah, my wife was mentioning don't don't cut over your legs. Um, something I do do. And I wanted to confess, too, a couple things. I'm responsible for this. I, di <laughs> I didn't have a splitting wall at the time. And one more thing. I just, this plays on my conscience. It might seem nothing to you, but we talked about my walking stick yesterday, and we said that we killed a couple copperheads. I killed several copperheads, but I said I killed two with this. It was only one. But anyway. I thought you did have it, I guess you No. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm just going to go through some safety um, things to keep in mind with knives and axes. And um, before I do, I want to ask you to share with me. Some of you used knives maybe in the past for the first time yesterday. Maybe you use them for years. I think these ladies are pretty handy with them. But name some good safety um, instructions when handling a knife and an axe. Let's name some before I do. Yes? Don't take it out until you're ready to actually use it. Don't take it out of the sheath until you're ready to use it. Very good. Another one. Keep it sharp. That is one of the most important ones there, is to keep your knife sharp. Why would you think that is so important to keep your knife sharp? Yes? Very good, because that comes into play with that blood bubble. If you're putting a lot of force on it to get it through, it's going to slip out and you're going to end up way out here. Yeah. Okay. Why else would you want to keep it sharp? You talked about it a little bit. What? It's a very good point. Did everybody hear that? There's a difference when you have a sharp knife and get a cut and a dull knife. A dull knife is going to have burrs. It's going to tear more. Um, and you talked about, I think that you were talking about, brother, is it's going to take more energy to use a dull knife. And we often have a tendency to try to take off more than we really need to. You need to take just even strokes, just a little at a time. Okay, some other safety instructions that would be good. Cut away from the body. It's also good to, um, let's just use this. It's always nice to have an, it's, well, we had a tree stump. Something solid to work on. So you're, what you're working on isn't moving around either because that makes it harder, more unwieldy. But have something solid to work on when you're working with it. Just keep, keep your hands onto your knife. Because if you got it sticking out here and you're cutting and it would hit something, well then your finger's right underneath that blade. Okay. Any other things? Never use a knife when you really needed another tool. That's a good point. You know, tools, you wouldn't use a screwdriver to cut a board. I mean, that's pretty obvious. But even a knife and hatchets, there are different jobs for different size knives or different knives and hatchets and axes. And you have to know uh, the jobs that they're good for. Um, and we, my wife mentioned some of them. Now, for example, if we're going to baton. Now, I would not baton with this knife. 
<laughs> that knife is not meant. If I got a baton with this knife, I, I've got the wrong knife. But so you want to use the right knife, the right tool for what you're doing. But we want to make sure that we keep these out of the reach of children too when we're storing them. You, some people keep them locked up or up higher. Um, but keep them knife we t or sharp, we talked about that. Um, let's see, what else we have here? Oh yes, yeah, so a knife. Always grab and hold it by the handle. Okay? And when you hand it to somebody, yeah, yeah turn it around this way. And don't hand it to them holding it this way. Bad idea. Bad idea. Um, seen people check the sharpness of a knife this way. Bad idea. You're going to cut yourself. You can feel it this way. Okay. Um, and there is a right way and a wrong way in, in the, to put your knife in the sheath. And I saw this several times yesterday. <laughs> but you can see the shape of your sheath. Make sure that your knife shape goes in the same way. And you'll hear it usually click. Um, because if you put it in backwards, then your knife is going to be, edge is going to be hitting the sheath and it's going to dull it. Um, and something I like to do, if I'm going to be sharpening, which I'm going to talk about that, I like to wear a pair of leather gloves because your fingers are very close to the blade. And so a pair of leather gloves, good to have. And don't be in a hurry when you're using a knife. Uh, that's when accidents happen. Um, and try to make sure that you're using your dominant hand. Sometimes you've got a switch. I don't know, maybe you can use two hands. I can't. I'm very unambidextrous with my left hand. Um, and if you should happen to drop your knife while you're using it, should you try to catch it? Let it fall. No, let it fall. That's right. And something too, even, you know, you've seen this in the movies, at least I did. Um, you see these lumberjacks walking through the forest, whistling on their way to work. Yeah, don't carry your axe like this. Why wouldn't you do that? That's right. It's right near your head. Just think too, if a branch caught it and this come up to catch you. Always now, a double-bitted axe is going to be different than a single, but always carry it down by your side. And what should you do if you happen to trip? Because when you're in the woods, I don't know, there's a lot of stumps, roots that you just don't see. You're going to end up be tripping. What should you do? You throw it. If you're stumbling, you throw it to the side of you. Don't try to hold on to it. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, yeah. Don't use if you're tired either. Because that's when accidents happen. Um, and then... Think of safety, like I said, the leather gloves. It depends on the task that you're doing, but safety glasses. And a good pair of shoes, especially if you're using an ax. Um, I don't have steel-toed, but it probably would be recommended if you're doing a lot of chopping, um, especially felling trees. Um, good idea to have safety shoes. Um, and that's it that I have for safety, but we want to look at maintenance now. We invest a lot of money into our tools. And so we want to care for them. And uh, so they should be cleaned, and I'm a bad example, but they should be cleaned after every use. And like, for example, this knife here. These were all used yesterday, so they're all dirty. But this knife here, well, there was one that was a little dirtier. Let me get that one out. Yeah, you can see this knife got, I'm not sure what that is on it. Hard to know when you're cutting bark. There's things on bark you don't know. But how would you clean this knife? Now, it depends what it is, but by the looks of it here, just simply soap and water. You don't want anything real abrasive. But soap and water would be fine. Same thing you could do for your handle. Um, now, I brought one of my dad's um, skinning knives for an example. I used to hunt, but I don't anymore. But this is one of his. It hasn't been used for a while. It's been setting in the sheath for quite a while. But you can see that there's rust on here, it's just on the edges here. 
and just a little bit on the tip, you can see. What would you do for rust on a knife? Pardon? If it's just on the edge here, where typically you're going to find that with a stainless steel knife, you could get by with just sharpening it. Uh, but sometimes it'll come back a little bit further. So what would you do if that rust was a little bit further back? You couldn't take it off with sharpening. I know ladies probably know this. You can use a mild abrasive um, baking soda, um, but something even milder and just the tip if you soak it in or whatever's rusty. Uh, my wife does this with cast iron um, cookware. But vinegar, you can use vinegar. Um, but even with this, I just looked at this knife, I tried cleaning it off. This is really just surface rust here. I can take this off simply with soap and water on this as well. Um, but it depends how deep it is. You may have to use something more aggressive to get the rust out. It just depends how deep the rust is. And then I just, as far as um, the knife itself too, you can um, and should actually um, oil your, your blade. Um, to avoid the rust. And so you can use a three-in-one oil, um, you can use a gun oil, uh, sewing machine oil. You don't want to use car oil because car oil has detergents, additives, cleaners, and different things which can affect the blade on your knife. Um, another thing too is, my wife mentioned this, have a designated tool. This one here I do use and have used for stumps in the yard. Um, and because it takes a little work if you mess up the bits, the edges on these. And that's where I want to go to next. Um, what we talked about, one of the greatest uh, safety issues and maintenance issues really is keeping your edges sharp. And so, how do you do that? Well, when I was young, I grew up using whetstones, and so that's what I'm familiar with, and so that's what I stay with. Um, but the whetstones that they have today are not the whetstones that I used to use. These are really uh, fancy. The whetstones that I had, they were just a block. You've probably seen them a coarse side and a medium side or a fine side, a medium side. And then the one that I liked the most when I did uh, axes were the pucks. Have you ever seen the stone pucks? Those I like the, the best, but you know what? I've looked several places. I can't find them. I've got them, but we've moved 13 times in the last nine years, and I can't find everything that I used to have. But anyway, um, I recommend a puck for the axes, as long as I got this, um, because with an axe, you're going to do heavier work than you will with a knife. And a lot of times when you're using an axe, you're heading toward the ground with it. So chances are you're going to end up in the ground sometime or another. You're probably going to hit a rock if you're using this, which I do to take out stumps and taking out roots. And so you're going to need something more than a whetstone. I want to talk more about this, but as long as I got this axe in my hand, um, you're going to want to use a file um, because when you get a divot, now I don't have any divots in this, but this file, when you get a, a nick in the edge, you're going to have to take metal off. It's not going to be just sharpening it. You're going to have to remove it because you can look down, when you sharpen now, you can look down your, your edge and what I like to do is just kind of eyeball it because you want to stay with the angle that you're axe or knife has. Now, most your knives are going to be between 15 and 25 degrees. Now, if you do it enough, you can just kind of estimate or like I said, just look at it. You can eyeball it. It's close enough because when you think about it, this is a, a knife sharpener. I can sharpen an axe with this too. Now, this is a steel sharpener. My wife and I have used a lot of sharpeners. Now, this one we really are impressed with. It puts on a nice edge. I am surprised. But this is a three-in-one. This side I can do axes and knives with. This side I can do um, loppers, you know, that you're cutting out branches with. And then there's a, a little groove right here you can do scissors with. And we're both really impressed how well this really works. Um, 
But my point, what I wanted to say with this is, when you use these or any of these sharpeners, I've got another one here. This is carbide with ceramic. The carbide is more coarse. It's going to take out the rougher edges. The ceramic is for the fine. But whenever you use something like this, it has a fixed angle on it. So it doesn't matter what angle this is or any of your knives are. This is the angle you're going to end up with. So that's why I'm saying, really, you can just eyeball it when you when you're using the uh, whetstone or the file. But just really just following it along. But you want to have a, a secure, as I was talking before, a secure place to work. I mean, if you're going to hold it, this is going to move. I like to put it in a vise, because then there's no movement on it. But you just follow it with the file, and you're just going to move along. And I, I like to keep track of the number of strokes that I do because I like to keep it the same on the other side. Now I've got an axe here I wanted to show you that I had sharpened last time and I'll show you what happened. Now depending on the angle of your your axe or your knife, this is how it should look. You know, it might be the angle might be different, but I looked at this uh, Estwing boy's axe. And the, uh, let's see, how was the edge on it? It was more like, like this. I over sharpened it on this side. You can see that? You don't want that. Um, so I'm going to have to bring this edge back. I'm going to have to file it this way. It should come, the, the peak sh point should be in the middle. And so if you have nicks or burrs, you can start with a file. Um, but typically with most knives, if you do your maintenance, now this one comes with a nice little angle that you can set. So you can set your knife on there and you can follow that along. But again, I've seen other things, for example, like I said, anywhere between 15 and 25 degrees. If you're not really sure what 20 degrees is, if you want to be somewhere in the middle, you can get a piece of paper. That's a 90 degree angle. You fold it in half, and what do you have? 45. You fold it in half again, what do you have? 22 and a half. So you can lay that up there. That'll get you close, OK? Um, but if you're doing regular maintenance, on your knives. Um, now this, this here is a wet stone. Now this is considered a splash stone. Do you know what, well there's, I'll just tell you, there's a splash stone and a soak stone. Do you know what the difference is between a splash stone and a soak stone? A soak stone, depending on the grit, is going to have to be soaked for an X number of minutes. Each manufacturer I found to be different. The finer it is, it might be around five minutes. The coarser it is, they can soak it up to 20 minutes. But I like using a splash stone. That's what I grew up with. I have a bucket of water next to me. I'll dunk my stone in there, and then I'll just start going. And I'll show you how to do that. But as I was saying, if you do regular maintenance, now this has a coarse, medium, and fine. The coarse now, again, is going to be more for something serious, not your usual sharpening. It's probably going to be a big burrs or nicks to use the coarse. You won't use that very often unless you've really abused your knife. But I'll typically start with the medium. And uh, I can pass this around, but I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. But again, I'll dunk this in water just to get it wet. And the reason for that is because this is a stone. There's grit on it. If you're using it, the pores will fill up, and it won't do its job. OK? So what you want to do, or what I do, get, get the stone wet, and I'll start down here. And I'll get my angle. I kind of know the angle that I need. And I'll pull it towards me, and I'll move it this way as well. And you've got to follow it all the way to the tip, to the end. Now, I'll count my strokes again, because I want to keep them even. I'll do five, and then I'll go back this way. The same thing, pushing down and pulling out all the way down. I'll do that five times. I'll rinse my stone, rinse my knife, and I'll check it. And if it's where I want it to be, um, I'll move on to the fine. The fine's going to put on a nice, sharp edge. Same technique, just draw it towards you, following it all the way down to the, through the tip, 
count the number of times because I didn't do that. That's why I ended up with one side at a sharper angle than the other. Um, and just keep rinsing the stone. We want to keep the grit out of there. I rinse my knife as well because that stuff can build up on your knife as well. Um, that's basically it, I guess. Um, yeah, go ahead. I, I just wanted to say one thing. <clears throat> Get close to the microphone there. You know, ladies, we've got a lot of stuff going on. You know, we, we have to multitask. We're cooking, we're answering the phone, we're dealing with children, we're, you know, all kind of stuff. This is idiot proof. And I'm not at all saying that ladies are idiots by any means, but I'm saying for myself, I have never mastered really, I mean, I can sharpen a knife on a wet stone, but I don't mess up with this. If, if you really just don't want to be a master knife sharpener, you just want to keep your knife sharp, get one of these. It's made by Steel, S-T-I-H-L, I think that's how you spell it, Steel Chainsaws. This one is, this particular one is made by Steel. I like this one because it protects your hand as you draw your knife through to sharpen it. I like these because they're a little more portable and they do have the ceramic, which you're going to get a, a better edge by using the steel and then the, the ceramic. So for me, as a woman, I'm going to stick with these. So anyway, what, did you have your hand up? I was going to ask the brand. You said it's steel. Steel, steel like the steel chainsaw steel. brand? Yeah. Now, this is somewhere around $25. And this setup, this was 15 Oh, OK, $15. This was $25. I got this at Walmart. Um, it's got an, and these, yeah, I've seen these as $4. They're not, not much to them. But um, this, I haven't used this. I just bought it because I couldn't find my whetstones, so I can't honestly tell you how well it is. But I set it down on a platform, and it's got four little legs on here that are really sticky. It holds it well in place, so you could simply use it right on this. Yes. Is it okay to use oil on a whetstone? I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. They call this honing oil. You can use oil. It's just like when I started in carpentry work. You know, I would ask 10 different people the same question and I would get 10 different answers. It just depends what you're comfortable with. Um, so, some people wouldn't use anything but oil because oil will lighten the friction. That's what oil does. But Water, well, dissipates the heat is what they say. I don't know. I, I just can't imagine that I'm sharpening my knife enough where I'm going to create that much heat. Um, but there are probably other reasons um, why they use oil. I don't know. Um, but I've heard some people say you don't need to use oil. I've never used it. It may be better. I don't really know. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it, but when you're done with your knife, you should oil it. And you can use, um, like I said, three-in-one gun oil, sewing oil, and leave it on. Don't wipe it off. Leave it on. Leave it set out on a piece of cardboard and let it set to dry for about an hour or two until it's dry. Then you could put it back in your sheath. Um, anyway, yeah, you can use oil. All right, we're going to move to what we're going to do, knot tying. and.